Mark Burgess here with Music Marketing TV. Today we're gonna to be talking about navigating in Sequoia Pro 17. So let's dive into some effective ways of navigating. I won't be covering them all, but I'll be covering some pretty important concepts. So first off, let's take a look in the main play area. If you hold control and scroll your mouse wheel, you will scroll uh, vertically, changing the size of the tracks. If we then scroll up down, we can move vertically as well. There is an exception to this. This is the first part that could be a little confusing. Um, this over here, this scroll bar, uh, it has like a ratio depending on the size of these tracks. So if we alter the size of these tracks to be a different size, and then we scroll up down, nothing changed here, but this same amount of space is still this amount of space. And so when we zoom in, and then I scroll up and down, you see how we only go down part of the way? Uh, and this can be confusing. And it's because we've changed some of these tracks. If I change them all to be pretty small, uh, it can become much more apparent because when we zoom them up now, now I'm scrolling, but since we changed how this space right here is, uh, it doesn't move at all and we get this issue. So it'll still work by the way, if we hit shift up down and you can see we can go through the tracks. Here's kick two, here's the hat, here's kick one and there's the drums. So shift up down will take you up and down tracks but you may find yourself in a position where vertical scrolling breaks and you might be going, how do I fix it? So if you right click on it, uh, just right click on a track and right now it's being a bit weird. Oh, it's because this is a folder track. Right click on some other track that's not a folder track and come over to the minimize none. And this will reset the scales so that now this is hunky dory with this. So every now and then, you know, if you change something to edit it, and typically if you make things bigger, it's not an issue. So when you start making things smaller, that it becomes more of an issue. Like you can see this still works. Um, so that's uh, how you deal with it though. So first important thing to know, it threw me super hard and I went nuts trying to figure out how to fix what I had done. I didn't understand my vertical scrolling wasn't working and that was why. So there you go, there's the vertical scrolling and the vertical scaling. You can horizontally move about like so. And if you hold control and shift, oh, I should say shift holding the scroll will allow you to move horizontally. If you add control to that, you'll scale horizontally. So this already is pretty dang handy. Like we can move around, we can go up and down vertically, we can scroll things vertically. If we change the size, we know how to fix it. All of these things are pretty intuitive. I try for the life of me to stay away from these bars on the sides just because it's a lot of extra mouse movement, not necessary, but there are some cool things in these bars that are worth knowing about. If you right click on them, they have these different zoom levels, including like one pixel to one sample. I don't know why I think this is as cool as it is, but I think it's freaking cool. So there you go. Over on the vertical one, there's one pixel to one bit and you just get some, I don't know why I think this is so cool, but I think it's staying cool. So we're going to zoom out now. So I'm going to hold control and actually we're, we're fine on the Y axis. I'm gonna hold control shift to scroll out vertically. And this brings up a good moment to talk about the wave scaling. So if you hold alt and scroll up down, you can rescale the wave. So if you turn things down in the mix and you still wanna see, see how low that is? We could just scroll up until we see it. Uh, double click to reset stuff, by the way. So that is alt plus mouse wheel. Now I might be going, how do I remember all these things? That's a lot of things. Well, let me show you. If you hold shift tab, you can bring up this menu. And in here, I've been showing you all the ones that have to do with the mouse wheel. So you can reassign them, you can change them to do different things. Other default assignments are fine, I think. Uh, so, but that's where this exists. So again, you hit shift tab and it brings it up and I go to the mouse wheel. I'm sure there's other ways to get to this menu maybe specifically, uh, but that's the one I know, it's pretty easy. And if I forget what I'm doing, I can usually just fumble around and I'll discover the shortcut. So that's shift tab. The other way of getting to that menu is you come up to file, you go to program preferences, then you come down to keyboard, edit keyboard shortcut and menu. 
So it's kind of tucked away in things and uh, that'll take you right here and you still have to go to mouse wheel. And you can go through and change all of them. You can set up custom ones. I mean, it's super customizable. So anyways, that's like fundamentals of working. Obviously you can come down here and move these bars and you can change their sizes to change their, I mean, you know, what their current value is. And this could sometimes be helpful if you want a very specific smooth value, but I usually find this uh, unnecessary. So there's our first way of getting around, pretty handy. Our next way of getting around is by using one of the mouse modes. So you could come up here and click to get to the mouse modes, or you could just click the buttons at the same time and this will bring up the mouse modes. And there's one in here called the zoom mode. Uh, this is also known as marquee zooming. So I am not gonna click that because there's a shortcut for this that's a lot more useful. If you hold Z, it will bring it up automatically. If you let go, you go back to the mouse mode you're at. So now you don't have to come in here and then like change it and then go back. That would be crazy. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna hold down Z and I could click over a region I'd like to inspect and let go. And now I can make edits here, do things. And then if I go back and then I right click instead of left click, it takes me back to where I was. Now the way this tool works is if you click just without drawing a box around anything, left click zooms you in, right click zooms you out. If you zoom in like this, the marquee type of zooming, and then you right click, It'll take you to where you were. Now there's an issue with this that you need to be aware of and this, this bites me all the time. Uh, if you hold down Z and you zoom in and then you click on accident with this tool active, it no longer remembers what the last one was. So it'll just incrementally zoom you out because that's the last zoom you were at. So you can't get that snapping back thing. So then you have to resort to stuff like control shift or, or something like that. Uh, but that is the zoom mouse mode. You just hold down Z and it'll bring this up. You could of course also come here. Sometimes yeah, I meet people who, I've literally taught people who touch the keyboard as little as possible and they're just really fast with the mouse. So you can use the mouse shortcuts as well. Just the double mouse click to bring this up, pretty handy. You don't have to come up here. This brings us to the next method that is pretty handy, especially if you've accidentally screwed up your zoom level by, you know, zooming in somewhere specific and then accidentally clicking. And you're like, ah, oh, crud, now I gotta zoom out. And you know, we know a couple ways to do that now, but there's another way. Uh, there is the setup and zoom options down here. So these setup options save a lot of stuff besides just zoom setting. Uh, I usually use them just for zoom though. So they can remember stuff about your tracks. And in some workflows, this can be really, really handy, especially if you're working with like one track or just a group of tracks uh, that are related and they have specific solo groups that you want somehow set up with this. You could set that stuff up there and it can be really handy, but I like to use it for Zoom. So we could set a window position. So let's say I'm gonna come down here to the forbidden changing area because we don't like to touch this. But we'll do it for this. Let's say that, you know, our session's this big. I'd like to come to this zoom level relatively often. Uh, well, if it's blank and you click, it'll save it. But I already had something saved. So I'm going to right click it and go to save snapshot. And now it's locked the number one to this. And the keypad number one goes to this setup. And I'm positive you can change this. I mean, I haven't checked, but I'm pretty sure you can change it in that in the menu of all those keyboard shortcuts. So if I hit one, we'll come back to here. So let's set another one. Let's say that I want one that's like zoomed in a little bit better. Uh, so for that, I'm going to hold control. And let's say that I want kick two to be like bigger for some reason. And it'll remember this screen position. So now I'm going to go to two and I'm going to hit save snapshot. So now two has this position. So if I go to one, I've got this one. If I go to two, I've got this one. So if I hit one on the mouse, being no mouse, I hit it on the uh, the number pad. There we are in two. So if I come in and I accidentally, you know, I'm editing and I like zoom in way too far and I've set this up, it could be worth it to set it up really quick. I forget all the time though, and I wind up setting it up. But say I've zoomed in too far and I've clicked, so now I can't just right click to get out of it. I can just hit one and I'm back in business. Um, it saves us quite a bit of time. Now, there is sort of an oddball thing here. Uh, the number four, it does not have, if you look, 
by default, it doesn't have a key binding. So I don't know, you could hook that up to something else. If you have a custom keyboard or anything like that, uh, you could hook it up to a special button, I guess. Next up, we have the zoom. Now the zoom, I consider a little less useful. I don't uh, tend to grab this uh, all that often. Uh, the way this, this remembers the size of the horizontal bar here. So if I zoom like way out and then I right click save snapshot, it's gonna remember this like super zoomed out. And it, that's all it remembers. It doesn't remember the position or, or anything, just, just this state. Uh, let's go to two. So two is set to this state. Let's change the bar to be something like really tiny and we'll hit save. Now these ones are linked up to four, five, six, and then four is empty like this one is. So if I hit four, it remembers that long state. If I hit two, it remembers this very small state. Um, if I hit um, four and let's like move over and then let's hit uh, two, which on the number pad is five. I'm hitting four and five. It's the second row up. So the first three numbers are your setup and the next three are the zoom. So if I hit five, we will be zoomed in really close but we're zoomed in out here in the middle of nowhere because it doesn't care about where we are. Where if I were to hit number one, it'll bring me back to our to where we want to be and kind of what we want to see. So you could set up stuff to, you know, remember zoom sizes, zoom levels. This this is pretty handy if you have the number pad on you. I personally would probably map these to some mouse buttons. And when you're editing and you want to zoom in. Uh, if you have zoom levels you already like, uh, you can just boom, you can just zoom straight to it without even going to the keyboard. You can just have a mouse button for it. So I, I personally like that. Unless you're a trackball kind of a person, you could map it to something on there. So there is one other way of moving around and that's markers. So there's a markers track up here and markers run pretty deep. This has got a pretty extensive marker system. The markers are linked to the numbers at the top of the keyboard. So if I wanted to add a marker, I believe it's a shift backspace or backslash, one of these, yeah. So shift backslash, and this will bring up a marker and it'll number it. And I can move over, whoops, I did not mean to do that. Um, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, I can move the playhead over and hit shift backslash, whoops, wrong backslash, and it will get another one. There's ways to add it while it's playing and all these things. But all I wanna show you, cause they have like, you can, do lyrics, you can do time signature changes, you can do all kinds of crazy stuff with markers. The big thing though is the numbered markers, if I hit the number one, I go to one. If I hit the number two, I go to two. <laughs> so that's pretty dang handy. Uh, you can go up to zero, which if we were to, um, there's a way to do zero specifically, but it escapes me at the moment. There's a way to do it where you can, you can add markers. I think it's like shift plus or, um, it is a shift question mark and it'll add the next iteration of the marker. I wonder if it works while we're playing. Um, let's see if I can figure it out real quick. Play it. Yeah. So you saw it was playing, you hit shift plus, it'll just drop a marker and now we can go through, you can set punch in punch out points pretty easy and you can have other markers with names. Like this one can have a name and we'll call this one halfway. We'll put it, I don't know, some over here, somewhere near the halfway. And you can set up regions between these so that they, you know, it plays through those punch in, punch out, that kind of stuff. Uh, so the markers run pretty deep, but the big takeaway is you can set them up to navigate around that way. So there's a lot of info on how to get around the program. Honestly, it's like a little class on its own. You'll figure it out through trial and error as you do more and more of it. Um, and by the way, if this is too small, they'll just kind of scrunch up on top of each other. And as you make it bigger, you'll see some more room. So they call this the marker track. But that's navigation. If you have any questions, let me know if I skipped a way of navigating that you really like or use, or drop it down in the comments. I would be fascinated to hear uh, your ways of moving around. Uh, subscribe and hit that bell icon for future videos and have a blessed day.